Hey guys and welcome back to a new video in this KMP playlist where we will dive into resources in Compose multi-platform. So how we can really achieve that we share such resources in our Compose and Kotlin multi-platform project. First of all, what are actually these resources? And that's actually not so easy to explain in one sentence because on the one side we have these types of resources which are really just um, external files you have on your file system. You now want to import into your product here in Android Studio. So things like if you want to show a static image in your app, then you of course need to have that image somewhere in your file system. You need to add it to your app as a normal file. That would be one form of resource. We call that a drawable resource. Another type of resource would be, for example, if you have a specific custom font you want to use in your app. Then you also have a few files for that font that just describe how that actually looks like. And you need to import that into your project in order to also apply this font in your UI code. So this is one type of resources where we really just have static files we import into this project. But resources can also just be things or values that differ depending on the device's configuration. And with configuration, I really mean things like, okay, which operating system version is the device running on? Are we currently in dark theme or in light theme? I mean things like uh, which language is the device actually on? So another form of resource would, for example, just be strings. Strings you just want to display in your app because then what you can achieve with resources is you can say, okay, for devices that are currently set to German language, display these strings. And for devices that are currently running on an English language, display these strings. So you can achieve localization, for example. Or if you have specific sets of colors, maybe, then you might have one set of colors for only dark theme devices and one, another set of colors for light theme devices. Or if you want to show a specific string only on Android devices running on API level 34 or so, then you can also achieve that while showing another string on devices running below 34. So I think you get the idea that is what resources are for. And originally they were really um, a concept of Android apps, at least in the sense as uh, Kotlin multi-platform composed, multi-platform now implemented these. iOS of course also has something similar, but it works a bit differently than on Android and KMP really uses the Android approach here. So I'm here in an empty Compose multi-platform project in case you don't yet know how to create that and you missed the previous videos in this playlist. And of course watch these, uh, but you can also just uh, create such a project here on kmp.jetbrains.com in case there is no integrated wizard into Android Studio yet, which isn't the case at this point. Just enter your project name, package name, um, tick all those three platforms, Android, iOS and desktop, and then download and open this product here in Android Studio. And there we are. Let's dive into it and see how we can create such resources. First of all, I want to switch to the project view. So we see our actual folder hierarchy. And then we want to open our Compose app module. Here in source, you will notice if we open common main, uh, that Compose multi-platform already comes with this Compose resources folder. If we open that up, then we find a drawable folder in there. So drawable, as I already said, corresponds to any type of uh, image files or vector graphics that we want to use in our app. And there's already a Compose multi-platform XML file, which is pretty much just an XML representation of an SVG. So something the uh, Compose compiler will be able to interpret in this case. If we now want to add our own image here, which we want to display on all different platforms we're targeting with this, so iOS, desktop, and Android, then we need to go to Drawable. Since we want to add an image, right-click, New, and you can either choose an image asset or a vector asset. In this case, I want to add a vector asset. If you just have a normal image file like a PNG or a JPEG, then you can also just drag and drop that into your drawable folder and that'll work just fine. But if we're dealing with the vector assets like here, uh, then you probably have that as an SVG file. And in order to use this in Android Studio for Compose multi-platform, you just have to convert this to such an XML file that I just showed you. And this uh, vector asset wizard will lead you through the process of creating exactly that file. So let's click here. There are some uh, predefined icons you could choose here, uh, but at uh, these we could um, already access in our code anyways. So we want to tick local file where we can pass an SVG. And then once you click this browse, then our finder will open up. And here I will just drag in my logo from the other screen. So you just navigate to the path where you have your specific logo or SVG file or whatever you want to show. In this case, it must be an SVG file, of course. Um, so as I said, for normal images to just drag these here into your drawable folder. But for SVG files like here, my logo, let's open this. And then, okay, these dim dimensions are huge. Let's decrease that a little bit to let's say 200 dp in width. We click next, click finish. And then 
Android Studio does not yet know uh, that we are using Compose Multi-Platform because it's quite a new technology. So you can see uh, that it generated a new main module or directory here, but we have our logo XML in there. You can see uh, there is the representation of this, but we really don't want to have this logo here in this new main source set. So let's just take this command X to cut it out and paste it here in our drawable folder of the Compose resources, hit refactor, and then uh, there we go. We now have it here. Uh, we get some errors uh, that doesn't matter in this case. Um, I'm not sure if we can delete this main. Yes, just delete this again and then we're good. And here we have our logo XML file. So how do we now display this? Well, if we take a look in our common main source set, and I will of course also show you things like um, string resources and other types of resources, how you can get into that. But let's just start with this uh, simple image and vector graphic. Um, in our Kotlin common main directory, let's open our app KT, which is the uh, compose entry point of our app with a code that will be executed when our app launches. And in here, you can already notice uh, that uh, the sample code that the, the project wizard created for us already contains and accesses this Compose multi-platform resource. So this um, XML file I've showed you previously. In order to access that, we really just say, okay, RAS for resources dot drawable dot compose multi-platform. If you're an Android developer, then this is really nothing new to you. In Android, we are just saying R dot drawable. Here in compose multi-platform, we are saying RAS dot drawable. But this RAS is really a generated class. So the compose multi-platform um, plugin actually takes a look at your compose resources folder, goes through all these different subfolders, and then generates corresponding resource files that work for every single platform you are targeting. Right now, if we try to refer to our logo, which we've added, added previously, then you will notice that there is no logo. Because as I said, this plugin from Compose Multiplatform generates these resources um, when we actually rebuild our project. So that's the main difference compared to Android, where we can just use these resources immediately. But since resources and displaying such static files just works so differently depending on the platform, there needs to be some kind of plugin and code generation magic here that is abstracted away from us. So what we want to do is want to uh, revert that and just rebuild our project. So we can go to build, rebuild. In my experience, that always takes uh, quite long for Compose multi-platform projects. You can also see Gradle error immediately that it cannot find these, uh, this test classes task. We can easily work around that. Um, for some reason, there is no test source set here in the default project, but uh, Gradle still tries to find that, and it doesn't. So we can just open our builder Gradle file, and here in the Kotlin block, we can just create such an empty task so that it doesn't complain that there is no such task. We can do this with tasks.create, and we say test class. So we give it exactly the name of the class that it complains about here, synchronize this, and after that, we should be fine rebuilding this. Well, let's take a look at maybe the if maybe the sync did something. No, you can see it's still not recognized. Let's rebuild this, and then I will see you back once the rebuild actually finished. There we go. The build is finished. It just took almost six minutes on an M2 Max. Doesn't matter. Let's try if we can actually now access our logo in here. There it is. If we type logo, and then we get this as a drawable resource. And let's actually take this image and not... Let's just take this column, actually. Uh, take this column and replace our whole application composable, except for the material theme, with what we just copied. The text can just be hello world for now. We will um, use this to also uh, see how string resources work after checking the logo. So we just refer to our logo resource. Content description can be null here in this case. But if we then go to our run button and we run this on our device and then let's quickly move this running devices thing over here open this and see how this looks like on my device after it launched and there we go we are seeing our vector graphic that we previously added so this is now the android side let's also check if this works on ios we can do this by selecting ios app up here running this this will run this on your default ios simulator and there we go, it's launching. And we also see our vector graphic here on iOS. That seems to look very nice. Let's also quickly test this on desktop on the last platform we're targeting. Let's minimize this, go to desktop main, open main KT, 
Here we need to run this once. This will fail in my case. Oh, that's actually a different error than I was expecting um, and uh, that you saw in the previous videos. But let's still try if we can run our main KT file from the terminal since uh, that was the only way I could get our desktop uh, app to actually run here. We can do this with a dot slash gradle w and then uh, using the run task, let's see if this actually fixes it yet. Yes, it, it does fix it. And then we also see our vector resource. All right, that is how we can actually make this work with a drawable. Again, as I said, if you just have a normal image, you can just include this here in a drawable folder as it is as a PNG, JPEG, and then also access it after a rebuild here um, with RAS drawable and then whatever name your image has. But of course, drawable resources aren't the only type of resources. There are so many different types of resources we have, and I won't go through all of them. You can look on the JetBrains website and the documentation of Compose Multiplatform how your folders actually need to be called, but uh, I think they're actually called exactly the same as you would also call them on the Android side. So if you were to include a custom font, you would go to Compose Resources, create a new folder, call this font, and then um, include your font files there, and you will be able to access this with RAS font in that case. So if we just extend RAS, then we should be able to see what types of resources we can have here. Um, so you can see we have string resources, plurals. So if you have um, specific strings that um, are called differently or that are just different um, when you're talking about multiple of, of something. So you can say if you have one ball or two balls, then there is an additional S. Uh, this is what you can define with plurals. You can define string arrays and all that stuff. Let's for now focus on strings. So I think drawable font and string resources are the most common types of resources you would use here. Let's take a look at how that works and also see how localization would work in a Compose multi-platform product. For that, we will create a new folder here and the folder for string resources isn't actually called strings, uh, but rather values. That's also how it's called on Android. And oops, I miswrote that like this. And inside values, we want to right click, create a new normal file. And here we can now say that is our strings XML. In here, we can open this angle bracket um, at this standard XML tag here, which you can get with the auto completion. And then in here, we have resources, a resource tag one to open. And then you can see the auto completion already tells us what we can add here. Let's just hit tab and use that, but adjust it a little bit to have a hello world string. Then we say, okay, what is this hello world string actually in our default language? Let's pick English as our default language. So we say hello world. If we then just make our module here, so I don't think we need a rebuild, so we can just hit this little um, pickaxe icon or what that is. I hope that's also now faster. And yes, you can see that was very fast. If we now go to our app composable again, and here instead of this hard-coded hello world string, we want to display what we have on our string resource, we can set the text to ras.string dot hello world. There is our string resource. So don't worry, you won't need these uh, six minutes rebuild after adding a single resource. That's just needed the first time, and then you can just uh, make your project, and it will be uh, just fine. So uh, you can see it just still complains um, because I assigned the resource itself here. But what we want is we want to pass a string resource and then pass this in here. And if we relaunch this, uh, let's just relaunch this on desktop for now, um, which is still open here. So we need to close this in order to just call a Gradle W run again. And then we should see the same string as we saw before. Hello world. There we go. But the interesting part is now how we apply localization. So how do we say if a device is running on German language, we want to not display Hello World, but the German representation or whatever Hello World means in German, which is Hello Welt. So let's see how that works. And that works with so-called qualifiers. So a qualifier is something that can be added to these resource folders that tells the, the Compose multi-platform resource plugin for which specific configuration the specific resources inside that folder should be applied. And again, a little recap, configuration could be something like um, a specific language the device is running on, could be a specific version of the operating system, could be a specific theme the, the device is running on. So all kinds of different qualifiers we actually have available here. And for string resources, uh, the most obvious qualifier we want to apply is of course the language code the device is running on. So if we go to our compose resources, right click and create a new directory, 
we again call this values. So Compose knows that um, this should be the values for a representation or values resource representation for a specific qualifier for a specific language. And we then say dash DE, which is the country code for Germany or whatever country you want to actually use, just add the country code here. And then the strings XML file, we can just copy paste here. That is inside our values DE folder will be applied for German devices. Well, actually not German devices, but devices where the user set the German language. Make sure to still pick the same um, key here for the string so we can access it as the same string, but then replace the value with the German equivalent, which is Hallo Welt. And if we then just make our project again, we shouldn't need to replace anything because we just refer to the string here from our string resources and the Compose multi-platform resources plugin will then just figure out which specific string from which specific file here to replace um, for, for the corresponding device. Let's run this on our Android device again, like this. So we relaunch this, take a look here, there we go. And you can see it displays hello world because my device is currently set to English. If we change that and we go to our settings and we search for language, uh, there we go, languages, system, click on that, then system languages, you can see I have English and German installed. And if we then take the German language and move it up, so we set that as our primary language for the device, then we need to confirm that, change, you can see now it changed. If we now go back to our app, then the text also switches to the German variant. And the same should, of course, also work for iOS and desktop. So let's just try this out on iOS here very quickly, since we already have our simulator running. Here, the simulator is currently set to German, as you can see. So if we wait a little moment for the app to launch, we should be able to also see the Hallo Welt string. And there we go. You can see it displays exactly that. And if I would now turn this iPhone simulator to English, then it would, of course, also change here in our app. Awesome. I hope you enjoyed this. Down below, you'll find a link to my Big Cotton multi-platform premium course. So check that out if that interests you. Now on that, I will see you back in the next video of this KMP playlist. Have an amazing rest of your week. See you soon. Bye-bye.